Uh, what about the Oprah, Oprah and Gail situation? Ms. You mean Dipper. Oprah and Kale? Oh, yeah. Oprah and <laughs> Kale, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't feel ways. Like, I'm just gonna say this, and I know people gonna be in their feelings. I don't care. I feel the ways because I feel like all of these men are coming at these two black women because they're in a position mm -hmm. of power. Like I get it. She she said it at, at 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 an inappropriate time. You know, people are still grieving, all of that. But I don't believe she deserved the smoke that she been getting. And as far as the Oprah situation is concerned, I feel like people have been waiting on the day to keep the Oprah. So anything that Oprah does, any project that she signs up on, they're gonna be like, oh, she hates black people. Why? Because she's a billionaire. You know, like at the end of the day, just because she's a billionaire don't make her any less black than anybody else. And so I don't understand the fake outrage and, and it's pissing me off. And that's why I posted that um Michael Eric Dyson uh video to my community call. Y'all go look at that because he's fit facts and people trying to drag him because he was like he, Kobe was my friend and Kobe would object to some of the stuff y'all saying you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so you know and then stuff for like Snoop to be like sure you're outraged but why you calling this lady a dog head bitch or whatever he's saying and saying I'm gonna see you at on crip and all this and that's like you really threatening this lady publicly and it and it's not even about him threatening her it's like the fans or the other people are the real crips out there might hear and you know you putting her safety in jeopardy by publicly saying this stuff and, and inciting these people to do certain things it's the same thing that i was saying that um Mr. timothy was doing to me back in the day you know what i'm saying like you may not do it but you like calling your maddie mob to do certain things and so i just don't appreciate that because at the end of the day like this is a woman you talk to, you know, and and I, you don't have to be that disrespectful. You're not disrespectful to them white ladies, you know. Like if, if he was to threaten one of them white women the way he did, regardless, like the lady that used the n word or any of that, they don't give them the same smoke. It's like they mad, they outraged, and then they move on. They 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 suspend nope. the lady for three days, and then we move on because we used to be in call n words, or we used to, you know, the just for them or whatever so now the same disrespect that you feel like you getting from everybody you giving it to oprah and gail so it's like black on black crime division within the black community and i don't like it you know what i will feel bad i will feel bad but i analyzed that video she came into that interview with a double-edged sword she wanted she wanted lisa less another black person to defend a black person who done something bad in a uh, in a white viewership so that she can get backlash but because um because lisa leslie was um uh, articulate and she didn't react and pull uh, in a negative way she was able to articulate her words very eloquently mm -hmm. uh that it, it backfired because I think if, like you said before in your past post that, hey, you know, journalists have to ask the hard questions. But like I said, back in the day, like when I was in college and all this stuff, like the first thing you learn about in journalism is journalistic integrity, ethics, morals. You don't practice. If you're a real journalist, you don't practice yellow journalism. You don't do this. You don't really want to dwell in the um what's the word um uh, well not the scandal but like the what i'm trying to say but like this like the scandal of it like you don't you don't revel in that like, you know you'll break the news but you you don't revel in that type of stuff you get what i'm saying like i think she was i think she was trying to make uh, lisa leslie say something off flavor off flavor mm -hmm. so that when she got the heat for praising or defending a rapist, she can go back to her white counterparts and say, hey, look what you did, congratulations. She would have, she would have reaped the benefits of that reward if it would have went bad for Lisa Leslie. She wouldn't have been apologetic. Hmm. You get what I'm saying? So because that didn't work in her favor because she could have chose not to answer that if she was friends with Kobe. Mm -hmm. Now you've been friends with this man for years and you said you hung out with him for years but you felt some type of way about him being accused of rape why you never brought that up while he was alive you was you was personal with him why didn't you speak to him 
beforehand. You get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. So I get what you're saying. So I, but, I but, think okay, she, so she, came, right she came in with an agenda. She came in with an agenda to, to further make black people look bad. And she got the wrong black person to do that with. She would have interviewed Snoop Dogg. It, it probably would have went in her favor. But because people was like, hey, that was all flavor to say, hey, you interviewed Lisa Leslie and you say you honor this man and to bring up something like that and say, hey, that wasn't your intention. Why did why did you bring it up? You could have just simply said. Okay. So, I, I, okay, I get all of her wrongs. I get it. You know, I understand it. But what, so how do you feel about Snoop Dogg and what he did and what he said and the way he said it? You know, you feel like that's appropriate? Hello? I'm here. Mr. Ms. Debonair? Ms. Debonair hung up on us. I don't know. Well, I'll say this. It was quite interesting a few weeks ago when Terry Crews came out um, and denied and he did not defend Gabrielle Union mm -hmm. at all. In fact, he said something completely opposite. He just turned into a different person. Mm -hmm. And there were no black men checking him. They actually left her out there by herself to just be free for you know to, to her husband had to say something and say take his phone away mm -hmm. but yet and still when they disagree with gail they come and attack her because to defend you know the the it looks like the men they they um defend each other but right. when it comes to black women in the limelight in the media we are so unprotected Right. It's like they will not stand up for black women at all at no cost. They'll just leave us out there free and unprotected for any and everybody, for each other and for other communities to attack and tear us apart and tear us down. And that's I guess not that's okay. Oh, no, Mr. Debonair, you back on a different. Hold on. Mr. Debonair, you back? And like, like I said, Luke, I don't even respect his wife so his disrespect to Gail is no surprise to me at all but we but what has to happen is some people know this and some people don't when you have a huge following and what he did was he weaponized his fans he used mm -hmm. his fans with his language that's, that's, that's what it, and that's weaponized exactly. and, and used his influence to Turn against the based on his emotion, you know he, he that he had had a right, right to, but it's unexcusable for him to threaten her. Right, right, and that's how I feel. And, and you know, we all had a right to, you know, our opinions and how we feel. But to to say, you know, that he, I need to see you, and you know, all of those little. You know, subliminal messages that he got. I didn't. I didn't like that, and that, and it's and it's unfair. And the thing is, it's like more and more black men seem to have this aggression towards black women for what? And that's why Snoop getting dragged too. Snoop, like you know, they like the. But you know, what about you know? You're not protective of your wife, and and you out with this, you know, this white or whatever. But you dragging this black woman online, like it's like you on code at point. So you can't tell anybody else to be on code when you ain't even on code. Mm -mm. But so. the, what the issue I had with Gail is, of course, as a journalist, she has a job to do. But it appeared mm -hmm. that to me, it just appeared that she had a whole nother agenda. I did not appreciate the fact that one, uh, she came into Lisa's home. She did that interview in Lisa Leslie's home. And then mm -hmm. you come into that lady's home and seem like you're friendly. You seem like you're peaceful. You seem like you're just this humble, meek person. And then when you get into the interview, you turn into this snake. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, ma'am. You try to turn this lady and you want her to say things about her friend. And you see she's still grieving. Not only is she grieving, his fan, his wife is grieving as well. And mm -hmm. you're trying to compel and um, 
you know, twist her words and coach her and pull her to say something that you want that you want to hear. True. You you didn't even like what she said, but then you cut her off and said, "Well, Lisa, you wouldn't say it." So yeah. you basically told her she's not intelligent enough to understand, to, right? And I feel like she does uh, deserve know her friend. She should issue an apology, a public apology instead of an explanation. Um, but again, I think the energy towards her is a bit much because those other journalists who have been saying a lot of outrageous things, you know, get suspended from one day, like the Washington Post person suspended for one or two mm -hmm. days, they back to the job and there's nothing. And nobody's checking for them. So, exactly. Yeah. Mr. Devonell, you back? Clip yeah, you can hear me. Other black journalists, she did. Yeah. She, um, uh -huh. did you see it? She's explaining why the black lady, I forget which um platform she's on. She's on a, a news platform with a black guy and a white lady, a blonde hair white lady, mm -hmm. and then it's a, a black lady. She has natural hair, so she's going to, she has a very intelligent um breakdown of why we are so emotional and feel the way we feel about this backlash and, and how Gail has handled it and why it is the way it is, you know? And so what her um, white colleague said, when well, she said, oh my God, she said, even as a white woman, you just made me understand some things I never understood. It's on Instagram. Okay. If I see it, I'll mention you in the comments so you yeah. can see it. I want to see that. But it's real deep and it's hot and it's very impactful. Hmm. So, Mr. Devonair, did you hear my question to you? No. It's so eloquently explained, like why not, you know your thoughts about Gail. How did you feel about the way Snoop came across? You know, with with his outrage towards Gail. Like, do you feel like that was right? Like, how do you feel about? No. That? I mean, it's it's a moral thing. Like me, how I grew up, like that. Talking to a woman like that, you know, you just don't do. I mean, you can engage with a woman, you can have differences, but it's just certain verbiage that you don't use towards a woman. That's just how I grew up. Other people not grow, you know, grew up that way. And we we ain't gonna negate the fact that Snoop ain't the most refined, eloquent person, you know, to express himself on social issues, especially with that, you know, particular situation, you know, that uh it was offensive and then for another black person to to do that mm -hmm. you know you know I, i'm pretty sure he was outraged he you know snoop don't know no better he he ain't know a better way to you know to articulate how he feeling and you know he know what, what could have been yeah. as as he in entertainment he know better yeah but um it's yeah it's I, 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 animal you know what i'm saying and i understand right. the council culture and you can sit here and say she need to be counseled and all that but my thing is the the whole call to balance that's where i feel like there should be a line drawn i feel like people should know better because even if you're not serious about you know coming to see her a smacking her up or whatever the case may be you don't know what these 30 million people who follow you i have many million people who follow you will do you know what I'm saying? Right. Like somebody might actually run up to her and smack her. So you putting her jeopardy in place because you're basically inciting, you know, your followers to do something on behalf of you. And, and some people are dumb enough to do certain things on behalf of you, you know, as a right. superman. So I, that's what I don't like. But, you know, as far as his opinion or, or how he felt, he's he's justified. He has every right to feel that way as a black man, feel, feeling right. targeted, feeling, you know, that there's a, uh, uh, you know, not an equal balance when it comes to the way they, you know, uh, 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 dig into people's past, you know, black men's past versus white men. But at the same time, you can't tell these two women in media, and I understand they feel like these two black women should be supportive of all black men, but all black men are supportive of black women. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't understand why why we feel like we gotta regulate what Oprah and Gail or who or Robin Roberts or whoever else you know decide that they want to investigate or you know report on as opposed to you know everybody else. Like white people report on whoever the hell they want to. White, black, purple, green, yellow. So if if 
you know, everybody's biased. There is no such thing as unbiased, regardless of how they may pretend to be. We journalists and we unbiased. No, everybody contains biases. So if their biases is we don't like black men and this is, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. it's up to the black men to say, you know, we're not going to subscribe to what they're saying. Are we going to, you know, counsel them or whatever else? But there's plenty of black men. And Snoop is one of the included in this who disrespect black women on the daily. And they don't hold up code. They don't uplift black queens. Snoop has been known to post, you know, stuff about black women's hair on his Instagram and drag black women all the time. So it's like, you want protection, but you don't want to give it. So that's where right. you know I, I sit there and I'm like, what the hell? Like, and and then now, in addition to saying these two black women or Gail or whichever one of them versus the other or whatever are targeting, you know, black men, it's like you targeting these two black women. Like, so it's like it's two, it's like this big wide division within the black community, and it's just horrible. I'm I don't know what to. Yeah. What did you, uh, I mean, yeah. you talk about it all day long, but at the same time, it's like you wrong too. You know what I'm saying? Right, like there, right. there, there should be a come to Jesus moment where you know you can have a discussion and say why you feel the way you feel without dragging them down and making it seem like you know their work over the years isn't worthy of praise because Oprah has did a lot for the black community. All of the men that she's put through school at Morehouse, all the money she's given away, all you know, like there's a lot, and you know, I'm sure Gail has done her part too. So you can't take that away. For these one or two instances where they dragged your faves, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. I don't understand that. I mean, I I, I slightly agree with you, but just it, it, it's two points that I I, I want to just quickly say. Mm -hmm. I think the reason why um, Gail receiving a backlash that she is is because it's it's just the side effect of the Oprah effect because Oprah wasn't in the best of light uh, with black people and mm -hmm. that's her best friend and you know you always got to pair those two together mm -hmm. you know that's that's just cause and effect but because oprah had a whole bunch of stuff leading up to this moment with not placing black people in the best light it started off with monique mm -hmm. you know with that whole situation monique brown you know behind the scenes to the, the front of the scene and then the Michael Jackson thing, you know, and then her, you know, her comments about Bill Cosby and, you know, and then now with this Kobe Bryant thing, you know, and, you know, we're going to keep it real. You know, Oprah and Gail has done a lot for the black community, but their core audience wasn't always, wasn't geared towards black. You know, they, their scene is more white. And for you to showcase us that say, hey, you got this bigger platform. It'd be different if they come up with BET, but it wasn't, you know? You yeah, using yeah, the platform that's not geared to us. A white network. So that's what I mean when you say they're not for us. They're not for black people. There are different types mm -hmm. of black people. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, mm -hmm. you know, people look at Oprah and be like, because she, you know, has all this money, she's no longer black or representative of black she's more you know mainstream or whatever the case may be but at the end of the day i don't i mean i, I feel like there are a lot of black people who relate to her and relate to the things that she, i don't know you know i like, mean but lately she haven't been highlighting us yeah you get what i'm saying and then the things that you do that's so sensationalized it was highlighting the worst, she was in that uh, more house like it, it celebrating the, their you oh, know oh, yeah and it got and it got talked about for that it got talked for that day and that day only but okay. the shit that's been going on with Monique, that's been going on with R. Kelly, that's been going on with Bill Cosby, that's been going on with Kobe Bryant, the shit has been days, months, years, and it, it headlines every time it come up. That stuff that she done good only been for that moment and that moment only, and she moved the hell on. And I'm pretty she sure she, she don't bring that. The hell on. Because you know she she's still, like people are still benefiting from the good that she did, so I feel like we move off of the good and focus on the bad more so than anybody else. Yeah, because our little sector that we all network in is smaller. Mm -hmm. I mean, we gonna watch BET. White people ain't gonna watch BET, but black, white, Spanish, Asian gonna all watch CBS. 
mm-hmm. go all watch NBC. And that's the, the, the stations that they be on. And then they perpetuate us at the worst of the worst. You get what I'm saying? We don't, she don't, we don't get a whole month to talk about giving out turkeys on Thanksgiving or um, donating to an HBCU. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it go every single day that they will do a follow up to follow up on the trial and, you know, on the negative stuff. And they using these black women to showcase it. It will be different. Why you can't use nobody white to talk about why Kobe, you know, talk about Kobe le- legacy and his prior rape case to talk about Bill Cosby. They use somebody black. You get what I'm saying? So they can say, hey, proof that, oh, I'm not racist because, hey, Oprah said it. She agree. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm not mm-hmm. going to, like, if me and you can beef all day, you can done hit me in the head with a bottle, and they say, hey, in front of a whole bunch of white people, tell us about Michelle her character. Because I'm going to handle you around our people. You get what I'm saying? I can go in front of a whole bunch of white people mm-hmm. and, per- and perpetuate these stereotypes that they already think of us and they're willing to give me the money to sensationalize it so that everybody can have this common opinion of black, black people. You get what I'm saying? But Harvey Weinstein yeah. was the worst of the worst and he ain't seeing no jail time. He getting a fine that's nothing out of his pocket and ain't nobody seeing shit. Ain't nobody doing no documentaries. Ain't no they one doing no follow up. They do have a documentary. We just ain't watching. Well, well, it's, they, somebody said it's one on Hulu. About Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, but they ain't promote it. But here, everybody and their damn mama, you know, white people in my job saw the damn documentary for R. Kelly both damn seasons. You get what I'm saying? That's the point because R. Kelly is more famous than Harvey Weinstein. We know who Harvey Weinstein is and his, his impact in the movie industry and all that, but he wasn't a celebrity like that. You know what I'm saying? So when right. you- you compare apples and oranges. So when you are reporting a story, of course you're gonna report on the story that people want to read about. More people would want to read it if they did a, a expose about Harvey Weinstein. Y'all wouldn't be tuned in about all the white people he was fucking on the couch. Like I, I don't think so. But you know the thing about R. Kelly is R. Kelly was a part of us. He was, you know, the music was a part of us. The same thing with Bill Cosby. The shows were a part of us. The same thing with Kobe. The games were a part of us. So it's like yeah. we are more. And mostly attached to those stories, and so of course we're gonna pay more attention to who talks about those people because those are the people we want to hear about. That's why you know when people right. say they don't give the same energy to you know the white people who done wrong, we don't pay attention to them giving the energy to the white people they done wrong because we wouldn't read it anyway. We don't know right. that there's a Harvey Weinstein documentary because we ain't watching the shit. So right. you know, I just feel like it's. You know, it's 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 just an unequal balance. You know, just like Snoop yeah. said, it's an unequal balance of of distri- distribution of the uh, reporting and the documentaries. There's an unequal balance of us even looking for that information. You know what I'm saying? We ain't yeah. even searching for it. We just on the surface, of course, all of us black people, whoever, we all gonna say, you know, we done wrong because we don't see you dragging da 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 because we only see them dragging our our celebrities, our 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 faves, and you know, it, it's it's just they they they. Oprah and Gail chose to be the ones to to to, to showcase us in a nigga light. I don't I don't feel too bad. I don't think the lady should be threatened, but um, she, she for them to rethink the things that they do before they do it. Don't say, "Oh, I'm asking the hard questions," but I don't want to deal with the consequences. If I go out here and I say something that's not favorable, and I know it going in. I have to be ready for the consequences. You get what I'm saying? Don't say, yeah. I can't say that. I, oh, I'm going to ask a hard question. I don't care who it offends because it's something that I believe in. And then turn around and cry later and be like, oh, you know, I, uh, that wasn't my intent. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. When you know you're going to provoke conversation, outrage, happiness, sadness, crying, you have to deal with the consequences on all emotional spectrums mm-hmm. it might not be favorable for you like i said when people do these type of interviews and plus they journalists and they very very popular they not gonna do any just petty interviews they're gonna they're gonna do the things that's going to get them recognized mm-hmm. and she asked that questions for the notoriety of it 
like I said, if it went into a different direction, you know, that made Lisa look bad if she wasn't a person that was educated, knew how to speak, knew how to handle herself, not to conduct herself, didn't have etiquette. If Lisa didn't know how to handle that, it would have further gave Gail the fuel that she needed to say, hey, you know, these things go on and we need to be addressing these things no matter how good of a person it is with no yield, no respect to a person's family, not, no respect for people's children. Like, these girls were young when that stuff happened with their dad. So mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure they don't talk about it, so they don't know. Everybody right. pretty much forgot about it because this man legacy was outstanding. He don't have Kobe never had a bad reputation in the game, ever, 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 ever. And that's why people don't talk about it, because they know it was just a sexual mistake that he made of cheating. And they know full way he wasn't choking out raping nobody. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And then with that, like, you say, OK, you know, you feel bad and, and this, that, and the third about, you know, people reaction. Like, when you outrage how do you give someone the right to say, hey, how, sh how should you react? Like Snoop, he was dead wrong morally on my standpoint, but for Gail to understand the error of her ways, her and Oprah, to make them rethink the things that they do before they do it, why do we have to be subdued in our emotions? No, I don't anger anger is a valid emotion. You get anger what I'm saying? Like, I think the anger is warranted. Only thing I'm saying is, is it's a, a thin line between you know being angry and calling for somebody to get violently assaulted. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, yeah. Michelle, you say something really offensive to to hurt a whole community, not just saying black people, but a whole people that um, like the sport and like this man's uh -huh. character and the things that he done because this man was a. a a big philanthropist, you know, on the outside, you know, what he did, he was a naturally good person. All those people that follow his career, that know how he is, for someone mm -hmm. to say, hey, you doing all these things, they showcasing all these nice things about you. They be like, oh, yeah. Remember back in my life, he raped this person. You get what I'm saying? And you, I'm not supposed to be pissed off, so for you to understand I'm pissed, I'm not going to say, hey, Gail, um, you know, that was that was really, you know, all flavored of you to ask that type of question. Oh, I, I think morally you shouldn't have done that. And you think she would have really took that in consideration and be like, yeah, okay. She Maybe. probably would have tried that shit another moment. If I would have said, you bald head, Sasha Nate, buttermilk, <laughs> no edges, head ass don't, bitch, don't do I that. shoot you. Don't do she that. She will fully <laughs> get the understanding of my anger, you know, the extent of my anger, the seriousness of what you done. You get what I'm saying? Like people, some people have to be outraged to understand the error because okay. if people keep being passive, they keep doing it because they think there's no real serious consequence. So yeah. Snoop Dogg and the rest of these people had to do what they do for her to rethink the things that they're doing because they're rejoicing about, you know, this Russell Simmons thing. Oh, he was at Kane's and they got a standing ovation for these rape victims and their stories and the things that they went through and and all of this coming from people that look like us. Mm -hmm. We already, we still oppressed. We always still fighting to be heard. We still always last and everything. You get what I'm saying? Then they have these people that look like us rejoicing that you took somebody down, which, like, I'm in the middle of that because bad people need to be taken down. But damn, all you're doing is taking down black people. What are white people you taking down? <sighs> So yeah, I'm gonna be mad. I'm gonna send a couple bitches at home. We can have the same argument about Snoop and his outrage. What are white people you outraged about at calling bitches and, and saying you gonna you gonna see them? What it where they at? We can have that same argument. Hey, but I'm telling you, people sports people, man, they rather die by their players. And I guarantee them death threats come on. That that that's not a black thing. Okay. Black people an issue a threat, I'm gonna kick your ass. But doing death threats and sending you DMs and, and calling your phone, that's a white thing because white people love sports too. Mm. Okay. Absolutely. Like people might not like a nigga, but they like a nigga that plays sports real good. Absolutely amazing. Yes, your phone is clicking. I got it. I'm, is I'm that my to... phone? Yes, because when I put it on mute, it goes away. Look. 
Miss Debonair. Oh yeah, that was absolutely. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, see. Yeah, see? that was absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, but I mean, I mean, we we try right, to say that oh, you know, Snoop Dogg was wrong from a moral standpoint, but that had to be done for some people to you know fully understand the depth of the errors yeah. and maybe him sacrificing himself from a moral standpoint that it will prevent people like her and Oprah to do the things that they do. You okay. get what I'm saying? We 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 fight in a fight that's already hard. And then to have black people to face the sit up the further kick us down, like I don't feel bad for her. I don't feel bad at all. Cause she didn't feel bad when she walked away from that interview. I'm pretty sure she was reveling in but Lisa didn't yeah, did what they say. I know Lisa in the inside. Man, if you look at that lady in her eye, I'm pretty sure she wanted to take them long ass legs and drop kick the shit out of Gail while she was asking her that question. It was oh, it was so distasteful. So yeah. distasteful because she if she didn't mean it that way. She could have came back and had a statement to say, "Hey, you know, I don't, I don't agree with what these questions that people have to have to bring it up." She could have said anything. She could have, she could have added more statements to say that, "Hey, I ain't in agreement about these people bringing up this man rape case." She didn't. Yeah, she no. didn't. I hear you, Mister Devonell. I hear you. Look, so I gotta, no, I don't feel bad for you. <laughs> I'm sitting up here trying to order food while we. <laughs> <laughs> I told y'all my schedule all messed up. I I I didn't get up today at one or two o'clock. I'm hungry. Oh wow! So that means you can probably go to bed at about five six. I'm not gonna go to bed because I'm I'm gonna um, write up some posts tonight because I hadn't been um, oh. walking, so I'm gonna try to stay up and do that. I was thinking about going live on the channel, but I'm like, since I've been live over here, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I, might, you know, if, I might do a late night something. Who knows? See what? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's Saturday. Yeah, you rest up. Have us tied on going to church tomorrow. I, I come through since I since I like playing with Streamyard and my green screen. Right. Now. I wish somebody else would have came in and gave their opinion on this matter, but I don't know. amazing was here. Look, y'all, I got my green screen on Streamyard. Besides yeah. us too, but yeah, it needed to be done. I'm sorry. No, I, no I, I appreciate you. And I and, and I'm the type of person I try to see all sides of the argument, but at the same time, I, I still, you know, the violent thing for me is a trigger because again, you know, yeah. that's why I was getting restraining orders against people because yeah. you never know who's watching you. And then, you know, because I'm online and because I do stuff, it's like and I can understand her being afraid. And you you started right. with Oprah saying, Gail gotta walk around with a bodyguard, da, 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 because he bringing up gang members and stuff like that's why Tupac and Biggie got killed. You don't know what <laughs> people think about or why you know they'll do what they do. So of course I can understand her feeling some kind of way. So I feel like the level of outrage, like this black man died in a helicopter crash and we mourn it, and you bring up his mm -hmm. rape case. I understand that, but it doesn't warrant beating somebody ass and killing them. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like I get it. Yeah. I, I feel like she was wrong. She shouldn't have said it. It shouldn't have been brought up. It's mm -hmm. fucked up, whatever. Yeah. But, okay, berate her, move on on to the next. This whole, you know, still doing interviews about it, she going to see me and still putting that energy <laughs> out there. I think that's wrong. Yeah, I just think it was a snowball effect. That, that, yeah. was, that was the piece of rock. That was the loud scream on the on the snowy mountain that caused the avalanche. I just think the, all the other stuff that her... And her best friend has done. It was like, okay, enough is enough. And, you're and right. Kobe not deserving of that kind of backlash. Right. And you're He's right. Absolutely amazing. She did not apologize. And that's what but that was my point too. Like her blaming the network for clipping it up. They only clip up what you can what you gave them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like right. it was a part of the interview. Like how it portrayed or how it played out doesn't matter. You still ask those questions. You were still there and it happened the way it happened. Now them putting it out, you know, the way they did and people being outraged. You know, they can't foresee how people are going to take, you know, the content and neither can you like just because people didn't get mad at the full interview and then they got mad at that clip. It is what it is. But I do feel like she's black explaining and, you know, trying to evoke sympathy and all of that. And that's fine, too. But my point is the, the energy to me is off. 
that's all. Like, yeah. I just don't like the whole violent thing, and they don't have the same energy. That white, that white reporter that that, that said the n word, you know, and said she right. said nakers or whatever. They were like, well, maybe she did say nakers, okay, because she blonde hair and blue eyes. Y'all go get her the benefit of the doubt, or the lady, <laughs> who, you know, right. uh, posted right. the damn rape. Uh, case eight hours after the man died, eight hours like people were right. knocking on her door saying, I'm gonna come see you on blood, on crib. Like, it's just too much. Like, and I feel like they give black women that energy because we are unprotected. If they did that to a white woman, like I said, it would have been restraining order, cops come to see you, the feds looking like it would have been so much more to it. But Snoop, now he on the damn world tour on radio shows saying, Yeah, you know, she gonna have to see me one day. He's still talking about. About it, I think that's wrong, right? And knowing Michelle, and just think about this with that clip. Now, that clip was the highlight of the interview per the station, mm -hmm. which means that that was the agenda. <laughs> so, going in, that lets you know that's what they would that, that, that was their whole agenda. Mm -hmm. That was the whole agenda because if, if they if that station or Gail, what in their intent, why would they even showcase that if they had any respect, if they didn't have no malice, no ill intention, why would that be part of a clip? If yeah. if their whole intention was to highlight him and highlight Lisa Leslie and make them in a good light, you get what I'm saying? That's what that's what that's what give you pause to be like, hmm, y'all had no ill intention, but that was the clip that you shown. I mean, if y'all had no ill intention and they feeding you these questions. If if they want to highlight his career and make him look good, why would they even feed you that type of question? That's true. Okay. That was the whole. It was a gem. It was a. It was an agenda, and they yeah. and they and they showcased that to say that hey, this is what we want to do. We want to sensationalize this interview. You're not going to have no good light, cutthroat, clean interview. Nah, we yeah. want to the uh, you know this this the scandalous, and that's and that's what they did, and they got the backlash. Yeah. That's that's what it was. Well, look, y'all. I, I was looking for that interview. Um, mouth open, story jump out. I can't find it. She said that Snoop made a statement on the backlash he's getting. Did he make it on Instagram? What did he make it on? Did you see that, Mister Devin? There. Nah, nah, I didn't see it. I was gonna pull it up before I go order my food. <laughs> <laughs> what you order? I don't know. I was looking on Uber Eats. I might need to go because I, I don't need to be paying. Fifteen dollars for some damn chicken fingers. <laughs> I know I get McDonald's and get a just a ninety nine cent cheeseburger, and it'd be like fifty six dollars. Like, by the time they post all that stuff, I don't see the um. Let me see this. Here. Was it on his Instagram? What'd you say? Uh, I saw it on IG, but I but I couldn't listen. Um. I don't know where to find it at. I see, I see he did a video. Hold on. Let me see what this video says. Hold on. Snoop Dogg. Share audio. Hold on. Talk what up, folks. It's Big Snoop Dogg. Here's a message for the people. I'm a non-violent person. When I said what I said, I spoke for the people who felt like, yeah, was very disrespectful to George Hogan in front of his family. Now, with that being said, what I look like wants to harm to come to a 70 year old woman. I was raised way better than that. I didn't want no harm to come to her and didn't threaten her. All I did was say, check it out. You out of pocket for what you're doing and we watching you. Have a little bit more respect for Vanessa, her babies, and Kobe Bryant's legacy. Yeah. But anyway, I'm going to do what I got to keep doing. Y'all keep doing what y'all doing. We're very nonviolent. We just want to say that first and foremost. We speak from the heart. Some of you who have no heart don't understand that. But anyway, carry on and enjoy your day. They dragging him in the comments, though. Nonviolent, whatever happened to his 187 on the undercover cop. <laughs> oh, they funny. Uh oh Lord. Oh uh, see, they're gonna talk about that funky dog head bitch and have said that the really <laughs> shit, 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 shit ever said. 
uh lol no you threatened a woman i don't know why instagram do that i can't pull up no more comments but yeah i mean at least he, he deleted the original video and now he came back and said that but he did threaten her on crip you gonna see me you know like that's threat right. you don't think that's threat then you call it out hey. your gang like come on now i would take that as a threat i mean you know, Hey, Great. Snoop better chill out because remember when he first came out and caught that murder case? Murder was the case. But he yes. do a documentary on him too. Undercover cop. Like everything he said was about it. And then he did redemption when he was going all around with Tamar and all Bobby Jones and I was like, what the what the hell? Now he didn't he didn't backtrack now that he got his do-rag on. Now he <laughs> just love it. Now he got his do-rag on. He feel like he can threaten women like like no, I ain't gonna even go there. I'm like, like you gave me doing. Now you gonna threaten? And that's the point. Like you a whole man. The stuff that you said was inappropriate. Men don't do that. Like, I, if it was another man with that energy, maybe. But I just feel like men shouldn't do that. This is my opinion. I don't think it was warranted. And it ain't his fight. It ain't his fight. Talk about he speak for the people. People like you ain't speaking for me. You need to be who's speaking for your wife while you sleeping with that that white girl. Who's speaking for her? Like, you know, 